Shalom. I'm coming in the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim Raka Kwadash. Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and to the hopeful like pushing his word and truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. This lesson is going to be titled, We Are All Prisoners, right? Because being in the truth, you know, we were all had aspirations to do other things. Some was to play sports, some was to be an actor, whatever, you know. We are, our, our minds were on different things. But as, you know, the Holy Spirit, it called us or snatched us or caught us into the truth, right? And we're a prisoner, right? We're caught. Um, so Ephesians 3 and 1, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, for you Gentiles, right? So that's, I just wanted to read that. So he told, he, he talked as if he was a prisoner. He said, I am a prisoner of Yahweh Shai, right? And the word prisoner, <clears throat> Strong's G, 1198, Desmias, Desmias. Desmias, bound in, uh, in bonds, a captive, a prisoner. Okay, so I also want to go into the etymology of the word prisoner. Person confined in a prison, captive person, jailer, um, hostage, right? Figurative sense of one who is deprived of liberty or kept in restraint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, and we're definitely kept in restraints, right? Um, because we are, I mean, Yahweh Rataza, the hopeful elect, we are the, part of the hopeful elect, and... To, for us to be kept in the straight and narrow, we have to put in restraints, right? And that's the fear of the Most High. When you fear Him, it's like you have restraints because like, if you try to break out of those restraints, you know it's going to happen, right? It's there to keep you locked up, right? Um, I'm not sure there's anything else. And we are deprived of our liberty. We are, we are deprived of our liberty. We can't do what we want. Right? At least in the beginning. In the beginning, you want to go, you know, you want to go back and party, you know, go to clubs, you know, um, talk to this woman. You know, she might have a man. He's like, ah, oh, let me try and get her. Right? You can't do what you want. Your liberties are taken away. But in righteousness, because now you're coming back to your, your rightful heritage and you realize that those liberties that you have are actually just, it's, just, it's uh, conjured up wickedness. Right? So that's how it is in the beginning because you are a, you are a, a a captive, you're deprived of your liberties. And even when you grow into truth, you know, there's certain things you can't do because it's just against the law, right? So you can say your liberties are taken away, right? But it's only because it only seems like that because we're in a wicked world. This world's wicked. So it seems like our, our liberties are taken away. But really, we're just, we, 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 we obtained our, our liberties, right? It's just that this world is uh, uh, contrary to us, you know, being in the truth. So it just seems that way. Um, so we're going to go to the next one. Actually, it's just four. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation where, wherewith ye are called. Okay. So again, he mentions prisoner. We're a prisoner of Yahweh Shai. No Hamashiach. Um, all right, so let's go to the next one. I just want to mention that. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. It is a very good chapter, but I'm not going to read the whole thing. Second Timothy 1 and 8. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, nor of me, his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of Yahweh. Right? Who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling. So we are called, right? Right? You can say we are called. It was like a trap, really. Because <laughs> at first it says, um, right? Actually, let me go to it. Bitter. Uh, so you can find it. Just bear with me. Uh, uh. Mm. 
There is a scripture that I'm looking for. It talks about the truth being bitter in your stomach. Sweet at first, but then it's bitter later. Roughly paraphrasing. I just don't remember where it is. Okay. Okay, Re Revelation 10 and 9. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book, which is the scriptures, the Bible. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. Yeah, so in the beginning, you know, it's sweet, it's good. That's how that's how it lures you in. <laughs> Telling you all these things, you know, you're a prince of the power, what you're going to get in the kingdom, um, you know, your chance to be saved, be one of the elect, you know, women, all that stuff. It's all sweet. But then as you digest, you get deeper, it's deeper in the digestion, gets in the stomach, gets broken down, gets in the intestines. Then you're like, OK, but you can't be doing this. You can't be doing that. You can't get lineups. Uh, you can't shave your face. Um you know, you can't go to club. You can't do that type of stuff. You can't look at another man's woman. Da, 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 da. You know what I mean? It comes going and it's starting getting bitter. But after time, the bitter becomes good. Because it, there's things about uh, what it says here, actually. Go to the word bitter again. Um, where is it? There was just something I saw about herbs. Hmm. Just bear with me. I just saw it. I'm trying to remember where it was. Hopefully I can find it. Uh, okay, well, I can't find it, but... I know there's a scripture about it, but I know just in... Because I, I study herbs. Herbs that are bitter are actually good for you. They heal the body. Like anytime you eat some type of herb or whatever plant or whatever that's bitter, it's actually really, really good for you. Um, so that's why I refer to is that, you know, the scriptures is like that. It might be bitter, but it's actually good for you, right? It heals you. And that's what the scriptures do. It heals you. Okay. Um, that's why in the scriptures, you always say bitter herbs, bitter herbs, because bitter herbs are actually what are, what are good for you if you do your research. So we're going to move on. I don't want to prolong that. No, that's not what I was looking for. So we're Phil, Philmon 1, All right? You can see in the first verse, he says prisoner again. I don't want to read that. Yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee, being such as, and one as Paul the aged, and now, <clears throat> Slakia, I'll read it again. Yet for love's sake, I rather beseech thee, being such and one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Yahushai Hamashiach, right? Also, he's referring to himself as a prisoner, okay? So you can see there's a common theme here. We're prisoners, we're captives, you know, hostages. We're hostages of the righteous power and the son. Really of the son, really, first. Matthew 13, 47. Matthew 13 and 47 Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net. So what do you do with a net? You catch things, right? And when they're caught, they're your prisoner. And they're caught in your web. They're in restraint, right? That was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. So, you know, you catch, throw a net in the sea, gather every kind, like any type of uh, creatures in the, in the net, right? Which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the battle away. So the ones that were doing that were the, the hopefully elect, you know, the, the brothers, the prophets, when they go and fish out other men and bring them into the truth, right? And um, as we keep going, and gather the good into vessels, but cast the battle away. So the, the bad got casted away because sometimes you get some bad seeds and they get cast, they get thrown back in the ocean, you know? It's either, the, you know, the brother has to go do it or, or the most high will do it himself. 
You know, Yahweh Hashem Yahshua would do it himself. So shall it be at the end of the world, the angel shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. So even at the end of the world, you know, end of our times, which we're basically here, um, you know, a lot of a lot of people are gonna get sifted, right? Because the angels know who's who the one forty four are, right? Now at the end of the day, you don't know for exactly who is one the part of the one forty four, um, right? So you're gonna have some agent provocateurs in your camps. You're gonna have some brothers that are actually bad brothers, whatever. The angels are gonna come and take them out, right? So that's the point. And shall cast them into the furnace of the fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Yeah, because they're gonna be destroyed. Right, so now we're going to go to Matthew 22 and 9. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So highways, highways and byways is like the streets. You know, you go into highways and byways, you prophesy, and you try to, you know, fish brothers into the truth. You tell them, like, look, this is your name. You know, you're a part of, you know, you're Judah or Benjamin or Levi or Issachar. You know, that's your tribe. You know, your Israel, you know, 144,000 is going to be taken out of this place, you know, um, and to the marriage because yeah, Howard Shai is coming. So that's the marriage because we're uh, likening unto a woman and our uh, our, our bridegroom is yeah, Howard Shai. So you're trying to bid them to the marriage. So the servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found. So you're trying to search brothers out, right? Both bad and good. So bad brothers come in and good ones. So it's not just every brother that comes in is going to be righteous. You know? You're going to have some bad seeds too. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came, which is Yahweh Shai, in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. So when Yahweh Shai comes, he's going to know who's, who's, uh his men are and who are not his men. Okay? You won't be able to hide from him. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. So he asked him, like, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? How did you get in here? Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into the outer darkness, which is when you fall out. You know, that's the darkness because you only have the light. You only can see because you have the truth. Once you fall out of the truth, you don't have the truth anymore. So now you're in darkness, right? Which is the world. The world's pure wickedness, which is dark. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, right? For many are called, but few are chosen, right? So that's why you have to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, okay? But the point is that you're just a prisoner. But why wouldn't you want to be a prisoner of Yahweh Shai? I don't see why you wouldn't want that. You know, it's a beautiful thing. Philippians 2 and 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's funny. I just said that. Right? So that's the point. You can see that we have to understand that we are prisoners, but we have the, we have the righteous warden. So, I mean, you know, you do your work, he will reward you, you know. But in prison, just like you see in prison, you're going to go through it. You're going to be in your cell. You're going to go through it. You're going to go through your daily stuff. Demons come at you, et cetera, et cetera, right? But, we know at the end of the day, in this prison sentence that we have, we're going to be released, right? And it's going to be pure freedom, pure bliss, pure righteousness. So that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting for that day when we get to go on parole and we're freed. So um, I hope this lesson was edifying to the hopeful elect. And, you know, we're almost out of here. Just keep pushing, keep praying, keep working. You know, they close out by saying, Ka hala Yahweh, ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, ba Hashem Ra Ka Double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and to the hopeful elect pushing his word in truth and sincerity across the four corners of the earth. Death and destruction to his wicked kingdom and the two-thirds as well. Kwam Yasharala, Abad Babal, Shalom.